Hi everyone, welcome to this last presentation of this chapter, but as well the ecology classes made by me. As I mentioned, we will talk today about disasters and its management, so we can start. So, under disasters, we think of some sudden event of huge power that destroys the environment or property or endangers lives. These events can be natural, which sometimes happen in cycles as monsoons, El Nino, El Nino, but also sudden ones like volcano eruptions, tsunami, tornado, earthquakes, forest fires, and so on. On the other hand, nature can be affected as well by man-made disasters, which can sometimes have the same or even worse consequences than natural disasters. And they can basically lead to ecological catastrophes. And what we mean under man-made disasters is the occasional oil spill in the ocean, like which happens in a ship collision, or power plant explosions like Chernobyl nuclear disaster we'll talk about later. Also man-caused fires, toxic pollution of air or water or land. Also, landmass water dryouts, like an example is the Aral Sea in Russia, which is completely dry out, dried out. And it can even maybe consider the species extinction or forced introduction of invasive species, like we talked about uh, what happened in Australia under that, but this, this is still under debate whether or not it's considered a man made disaster. Here you can find the top five man-made disasters, the next slide will be uh, natural disasters. There are different um, categories of, of uh, top disasters, by its death toll or the economical damage it costs and so on. I just picked five, one I thought they are most interesting to know. So first would be the, the Bhopal gas tragedy in India, which took place in 84. Here you can see the picture. What happens then is that 40, around 45 tons of the dangerous gas methyl isocyanate escapes from an insecticide plant that was owned by this American firm. <clears throat> and the gas drifted over the densely populated neighborhoods around the plant. And at that point, they were killing thousands of people immediately and creating a panic as tens of thousands of others attempted to, to leave the Bhopal city. Um, the final death toll was estimated to be between 15,000 and 20,000 people, and some half of a million survivors suffered respiratory problems, eye irritations and blindness, and other maladies resulting from exposure to the toxic gas. The next one is Chernobyl meltdown, happened in Ukraine 30 years ago. I mentioned in a previous slide. So it is actually considered as the worst nuclear accident in the history of humankind. And it was mostly caused by human mistake. But still, after 30 years, it has consequences on nature and human health. And it actually had affecting area far from Ukraine because the, the polluted air was driven by air currents basically it was a worldwide natural disaster. It is assumed that it would need at least 200 years more to recuperate area of the city of Privyat that, that was next to the, to the Chernobyl nuclear plant, which is basically now the ghost town left as a reminder of, a, of an accident. Next I would like to mention the Deepwater Horizon oil spill that happened around the Gulf of Mexico in 2010. So first it was the oil spill and it followed the explosion and sinking of the, the oil rig. Uh, at that point 11 people went missing and it is considered the largest accident marine oil spill in the history of the petroleum industry. Um, the US government estimated a total discharge at around 4.9 million barrels and after failed efforts to contain the flow uh, the well was declared sealed in some of December of the same year but reports in early 2012 indicated that the well 
the site was still leaking, uh, leading to extreme ecological disaster affecting area firstly wide but also in depth huge affecting millions of creatures and the it, it is hard to say when the area will be completely recuperated as it can only spread around driven by water currents a really close one disaster happened in 2011 in Japan in Fukushima area at that point it was basically the the dominant effect one affecting the other disaster one after the other so firstly it was this really hard earthquake of 9.0 which created a tsunami that resulted in the damage of three nuclear reactors in Fukushima nuclear power plant and that had violated the safety requirements so this led to the only other level 7 nuclear meltdown next to the, the Chernobyl I mentioned to be the worst so over 100,000 people were, were evacuated and displaced from the surrounding areas with 600 people dying during the evacuation it's premature to know what long-term health effects will result from this disaster but it could be over 1300 including people as far away from the meltdown as North America so we have some experiences with Chernobyl but this is a bit different and we still don't know what will happen especially because it was surrounded by water so different air currents can drive the polluted air further and as the last one is, a, is definitely the ongoing global warming you can see in the picture the rise of the temperature in the, in the past 30 years it's really obvious especially these days with all these heat waves a huge amount of rains leading to floods and so on so global warming is something that affects every person on the planet and we talked about this in a previous presentation about pollution but the global warming is just a side effect of all the pollution the consequence of of generating CO2 and other greenhouse gases in, in the atmosphere uh, it can affect earth in many ways by drifts in uh, niches melting of uh, Arctic and Antarctic affecting uh, genuine species and human populations there rising directly the level of world's ocean leading to more free water in the atmosphere leading to more uh, rain, hail, uh, extreme changes in temperature so it, there are many levels of how it affects the earth and how the whole we can say the ecology of earth will change by the time through this change in the temperature and the consequences are just to follow we saw nothing till now and in this slide we'll mention the five natural disasters so the, the first one I would like to mention is the, the one happened in central China in 1931 and it was a huge flood, the worst flood ever recorded in human history. It lasted for a month and it a river over flood and it caused a series of other floods and as a result of the massive flooding an estimated 3.7 million people died from drowning diseases and starvation. Um, according to National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration more than 51 million people or one fourth of China's population were affected by central China flood of one way or another but it was the 30s so our bureaucracy wasn't as, as good as today so the estimations may be wrong and the disaster may be even worse than we think today it is and next one is Fukushima you noticed probably I mentioned it in a previous slide about man-made disasters but this is the thing Firstly, the man-made was the point with nuclear reactors, but it actually was just a consequence of a natural disaster, as I mentioned. Firstly, it was the powerful earthquake, which caused the, the widespread damage on land, initiated a series of like tsunami waves that devastated many coastal areas, and hitting the power plant. It connected, and this is the really important lesson to, to learn, because even though we are not sometimes directly 
responsible for some damages, we need to consider natural happenings to be sure that our influence on Earth is as least as possible and avoiding these potential accidents in collision with, with the natural, let's say, habits of, of planets. And next is a boa cyclone that happened in Bengal and East Pakistan in the 70s, in the previous century, and at that time it killed around half a million people. So, although Bola only reached the equivalent of a category 3 of hurricanes, the cyclone flooded onto densely populated, low-laying plants of the Ganga Delta and wiped out hundreds of villages in overnight. Even though this disaster wasn't so huge as on its own, its effect was huge because it struck to the dense populated area. And this is a 2003 European heat wave. It's just one of the series of general rise of the temperature in the whole world, global warming. So what happened then is that in that year, high temperatures across Europe resulted in at least 30,000 deaths. So the, the heat waves raised concerns over global warming and in particular Europe's readiness for climate change. Uh, just to link on previous previous presentation, interesting fact is that out of top 10 deadliest heat waves since 1900, six of them happened in the past 10 years. So they are just an, a real example, real-time example that the global warming is happening. And one interesting to mention as well is probably famous eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD, uh, recorded by my Romans. This disaster was so huge during the 24-hour period, it completely erased the city of Pompeii. And it's a historical information, but also it, it leaves us with a lot of environmental information and how the eruption actually started and how it turned out. So we learned from it and now uh, the area of Vesuvius is under high observation, keeping track of even the slightest change in the area of the volcano. Uh, so as, as mentioned on the first slide, there is the management that had to be definitely developed. So after experiencing a number of different disasters to history, a uh, specific action plan was developed to manage these types of events and we ended up with uh, four phases of this general plan for managing disasters and it's applicable for basically any type of disaster, man-made or natural. But of course for some fine details on local level, specific action plans are developed on the way in a, on a concrete place of a happening. So we mentioned four steps. Each has particular needs and require distinct tools, strategies, and resources, and also faces different challenges. To name the steps, they would be first mitigation, secondly preparedness, response, and fourth would be recovery. You can see them written here. This is a nice graph. Um, how how it all functions. So, namely, each of it mitigation involves steps to reduce vulnerability to disasters impact such as injuries and loss of life and, and property. So this might involve changes in local building codes to fortify buildings, revise zoning and land use management, also strengthening the public infrastructure and other efforts to make the community more resilient to catastrophic events and more prepared for eventual happenings. Uh, secondly, as a preparedness it focuses on understanding how a disaster might impact the community and how education, outreach and training could build capacity to respond to and recover from a disaster. So this may include in engaging the business company, pre-disaster strategy planning and other logistic readiness activities. Uh, the disaster preparedness activities guide provides more information on how to better prepare and organize community to respond to this un unwanted happenings. The response, it addresses immediate threats presented by the disasters including saving lives, meeting hum humanitarian needs, so like food, shelter, clothing, public health and so on, then cleanup, damage assessment and of course the start of resource distribution. 
As the response period progresses, focuses shift from dealing with immediate emergency issues to co conducting repairs, restoring utility, establishing operation of public services, and so on. As the disaster developed, the focus changes. Actually, disaster is getting weaker, but the, the response is getting stronger. So the concentration of response is shifting. And as a last step, we have a recovery. And it is the restoration of all aspects of the disaster's impact on our community and the return of the local economy to some sense of normalcy. So, so by this time, the impact that regions has achieved a degree of physical, environmental, economical, and social stabilities. Um, these recovery phases of disasters can be broken into two periods. So the first is the short-term phase, typically lasts from six months to at least one year, and involves delivering immediate service to businesses. The long-term phase, which can range up to decades, requires thoughtful strategic planning and action to address more serious or permanent impacts of a disaster. Investment in economic and development capacity building becomes essential to foster economic diversification, attain new resource yields, building new partnerships, and implement effective recovery strategies and tactics. So this is something that every individual needs to be aware of, even though it's not much you can do as an individual in a general sense, but even if you save a single life, it is, it is a huge deal. But we definitely need to get more prepared because we're just dealing with the consequences of our actions from the past and not treating the nature well. So basically it is ill now trying to recover and it has its way to do so. So we only can try to treat it better in, in the future and deal with the consequences at this point trying to survive. Um, this, as I mentioned, is the last presentation I will give you for this ecology teaching period. It was a really uh, pleasant uh, experience. I enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And subscribe to Wikipedia World next to my classes. There were a lot of other interesting topics. So maybe I will see you in some of the other subjects. It was nice working for you. Thank you again. And see ya. Bye.